friends, I'm Ellie, and today we're going to be learning about pleats. This video is going to cover the basics of pleating, which involves knife pleats and box pleats. There are many other types of pleats out there, but I think these are the most useful and they're definitely the most common. You may have seen pleats before in schoolgirl costumes, magical girl outfits, idol outfits, they're even on your curtains sometimes. So it's a really useful skill to have. Let's jump right in and get started. I'd like some pleats, please. <laughs> the first type of pleat we're learning about is called a knife pleat. This is the most basic type of pleat and is most often seen in schoolgirl uniforms. The first thing we need to do is cut a long strip of our material. In this case, I'm using a basic quilting cotton. Pleats are made by folding the fabric over on top of itself. And so I'm going to be using these marks as a guide of where I want my folds to be. I think of my markings in sets of three. The first marking is the edge of my pleat. The second is the middle of my pleat where it's folded. And then the third marking is where my first marking meets and it's the end of the pleat. It can be a little confusing, so I really suggest that you practice over and over again until you're comfortable with it before you start on your fashion fabric. I continue pleating like this until the entire fabric is pleated. You'll note that my pleats don't overlap at all. Each pleat sits right next to each other. Next, we're going to iron down our pleats. I have my iron on the cotton setting with some steam, and I'm making sure that my pleats are flat and straight all the way down. You don't want your pleats to be crooked when you iron them or they will stay that way. If you want your pleats to be extra crisp, I do suggest using some spray starch to keep them in place. If you're worried about your pleats remaining straight all the way down, it's totally fine to pin them the length of your skirt. Or you can go along the bottom edge and do the same pleating pattern we did on the top. That way you can make sure that they match and are perfectly straight. Once my pleats are ironed, I run along the top with a straight stitch and it is ready to be added to whatever project you're working on. Knife pleats are great because they are super clean and sharp looking. They look amazing on a skirt or great for trim, almost like a ruffle. Some important things to remember is that when you're working with knife pleats, I suggest hemming your fabric and adding any details before you pleat. It gets really complicated otherwise. Your pleats should also line up next to each other, but not overlap. They could if you wanted, but I don't suggest it. And most importantly, this pleating method, along with pretty much every other pleating method, takes three times as much fabric as you normally would. So if you are making a skirt, you need three times your waist measurement in order to pleat the entire skirt. Now that we've finished knife pleats, we can move on to box pleats. Box pleats are often seen in cheerleading uniforms or even in some schoolgirl costumes. Just like our knife pleats, we're starting off with a long rectangle of material. This time I'm using a satin material. I wanted to be able to show you the way different materials take pleating. Cotton is definitely the easiest to handle, but satin can look really nice when it's pleated. I'm marking along the top edge of our material just like we did for our knife pleats, and I'm also going to be using our markings in groups of three again. Just like for knife pleats, the first marking is the edge of our pleat, the second is the middle, and the third is our end. However, instead of continuing all of our pleats in the same direction, we're going to flip the next pleat so it faces backwards. So in this case, the first marking would be the end, the second would be the middle, and the third would be the edge. These pleats will meet in the middle and create a bit of a pocket of fabric. So I continue doing this pattern for the rest of the material. Box pleating looks really difficult, but it's just as simple as knife pleats. They're just facing in different directions. Now that our fabric is all pinned into place, it's time to take it to the ironing board. But first, let's look at how pretty this looks before it's been ironed. I use this method all the time for magical girl skirts or other floofy idol costumes, and it looks great even if it's unironed. Ironing the pleats gives us a nice crisp look, which is perfect for those schoolgirls or cheerleading costumes like we've mentioned before. 
When you're pleating with satin, you have to be very careful not to burn your material with your iron, and it's not going to hold a pleat quite as well as a cotton would, but it can still look really, really nice. And just like our knife pleats, I'm going over the top edge with a straight stitch. You have to be very careful when stitching box pleats like this. Because the pleats are facing opposite directions, they can easily get caught up into your stitches and roll around and not look very nice at all. It's important to go slow and meticulously. Box pleats are like a little surprise and look really cool when they're incorporated into a gown or some other type of garment. Some important things to remember about box pleats. Make sure to take your time when stitching to make sure that your pleats don't bunch up. Your pleats should face each other to create that box effect. And your pleats can touch, but they don't have to if you don't want them to. It's okay to separate them. Box pleats like this are also great to be incorporated into princess seam dresses to give them a little bit of floof at the hem. Now that we've learned the basics of pleating, the possibilities are endless. We learned how to make a knife pleat, which is commonly seen in schoolgirl costumes. And we also learned a box pleat, which is often seen in a cheerleading uniform. There are so many options out there, and I can't wait to see what you make with them. It's time to experiment. I'd suggest trying out different fabrics or pleating around a curve, maybe even leaving your pleats unpressed, which can create a really magical, ethereal look. You could even try using different types of pleats in the same garment, which can look really, really cool. Next week, we're going to be using what we learned to make a basic schoolgirl skirt. And I hope to see you then. So, until next time, keep sewing, stay positive, and have fun. I'll see you later.